All right, so um, this will basically be our introduction to Photoshop and photo montaging, as well as scaling a drawing uh, from Google Earth, right? Because that's actually part two of what's needed for the assignment. Um, and I forgot to mention that um, we need both for Monday. Both preliminary, doesn't have to be quote unquote final or finished yet. Um, but let's go ahead and go over both of those. And like I was saying before, some of this, of course, might be a review for some of us, um, but please have some patience, and perhaps I'll go over something that maybe uh, you haven't known about Photoshop before, so we'll go over it. But at least for today, I'm going to use Villa Savoie by Le Corbusier, uh, just kind of an example to, to get some things going. Um, and first things first, I'm going to need some screenshots or just kind of these images. And for the sake of speed I'll be sort of putting these together nonchalantly you know like um, really just to show the technical aspects of using the program not so much uh, the assignment obviously I, I do want to make it relate so I'm gonna do something uh, fairly close to the assignment got some floor plans in there uh, it's probably not gonna be the greatest image that being that small but let's take a section Actually, I like the other section better. Yeah, I like the floor plan. There's honestly probably better floor plans though. This looks like it was made by a student, but that's okay, at least for this tutorial. That looks like a digital model. Probably don't even want to use something like that. Right? And it's already fake. You know what I mean? That's pretty iconic for this particular piece. Um, makes a lot of sense to kind of use this. Now what I know about this project is that it's heavily dominated by um, Le Corbusier's five points of perfect architecture. The first point being that all good architecture should remove itself from the ground surface right, and free up the space, uh, which is why it's so open at the bottom. And of course this is actually the driveway and the garage is right here. Right? This is kind of just like a little summer home, right? not living there really 24-7 a year, but um, it also has a heavy emphasis on the golden ratio. In fact, each of these pods are the golden ratio compared to the square that is above it. And, you know, the geometry of this thing, it practically looks like a ship, right? Like a cruise ship more than it does really architecture. But you got to understand, for 1926, that was like, whoa, right? They, they didn't even have cruise ships yet. So keep that in mind. You know, the Titanic sank eight years before this was even made. Anyway. Um... So let's continue. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. Some of us maybe for the very first time. We're going to go ahead and make a new file. And don't get me wrong, we can change all of this. Um, so it's not super important that this is dialed in perfectly. Uh, but we do want to start off somewhere. So maybe I'm going to start off with my minimum requirements. I remember that it was 18 inches by say uh, 10 inches. All right, so I'll start somewhere. Uh, resolution is good at 300. However, if you notice your computer is very slow, like maybe you're doing this on a personal computer, I'd probably recommend 250. But 300 is typically standard for a high resolution uh, photo. And we'll go ahead and press create. Now keep in mind if I did want to change the canvas size or the shape or things like that, I could basically go to image, image size, and canvas size. Now these two do obviously two different things, that's why they have two different ones. You'll notice if I go to canvas size, it'll change the amount of pixels uh, within this this uh, ratio, right? So I I can I don't recommend going that way. Uh, typically, I like to change the image size. That way, I have um, the ability to change the resolution. So like I don't know, maybe I want to use 250, and I want to make it a little bit bigger. All right? I can even scale it accordingly to where it'll stay proportional. And you'll notice if I hit OK, nothing really happens except maybe the white space got a little bit bigger. But anyway, just in case you don't know anything about it, um, I like to use inches instead of pixels. So I'm going to hit Command R or on a Windows computer, Control R. And it's going to bring up this ruler for us. Now, that's a pretty sweet command, um, you know, not only for Photoshop, but really the entire Adobe suite. You know, you hit Command R as in, what is the code word for R? Robert? Roger. That's what it is. Um, but yeah, Command R. 
Uh, so let's let's get some of this imagery in here. Now I could just drag and drop it. Um, however, if you're sort of limited on space or want to do it correctly, you can also go to File and Place Embedded. The reason I say embedded is so that it actually makes this file and I don't lose it. Say I accidentally delete that screenshot, well, it's embedded right into this file. If I choose linked or place linked, um, it's just going to link that file. So if I don't have my USB drive and all my files came from that USB drive, it's only going to be linking to it, so it's not going to actually have the information it needs. Um, to make a long story short, choose embedded. Right? Save yourself from some problems. Now, of course, I'm going to choose my own computer. I just took some screenshots, so let's go ahead and get those. Apparently, I can't get them all at once, but that's okay, I guess. So we got one, enter, and in my case, to save on time, I'm just going to drag them right in. So I'll take my screenshots. And just drag wherever I can. Hit enter a bunch of times. And there's that one from last time. So yeah, that was actually kind of our example from last time. Might be a good way to start actually this conversation. And let's go ahead and make a little bit more. Of course, it's entirely hard to see on the projector. I do apologize. However, this is also why I do uh, record these. So you can always pause the video um, and see exactly what I'm clicking on. And maybe, it, you know, sometimes even the UI or the user interface is a little bit different than uh, what you're used to as well. At least maybe what from what you see on my screen. Anyway, I've got my imagery. Right, I've got some of my examples. And I may need to shape some things up. Right, I may not need, like, say, the entire sky of this piece. Or, you know, maybe I don't need all the pieces of this one. Um, so let's talk about one of my favorite tools, the lasso tool. So that's found over on our side and it quite literally looks like a lasso tool. However, if you right click on this section, you even get more tools. And I absolutely prefer a polygonal lasso tool because it stays straight. And let's face it, in architecture, we're using a lot of straight lines. So I don't know, first things first, uh, I you know, maybe want to isolate the image. So I'm going to turn off maybe all my other layers except my background. Uh, just so I can focus on that one image. I can also hold spacebar and use it to pan the image as well. So get that a little focused in. I don't know, think for a second before I do this lasso tool. Uh, maybe what do I want to remove versus sort of keep? So I think it might be kind of interesting that um, I show something else in these window frames. I don't know, maybe expanding on the idea of that, you know, this was a machine in the garden you know, uh, to explain this project just a little bit more. The reason for it, it's isolation, and the reason it looks sort of like a ship inside of, um, you know, an arbitrary site, is because it was meant to be this machine for living, right? This, um, well, if an airplane is a machine for flying, what is a machine for living, right? So, of course, this was Le Corbusier's response. So, I don't know, I want to expand on that. However, for the sake of tutorial and speed, I don't want to sit here all day and yabber. So I'm just going to show how I would remove something. So for instance, maybe this piece. Basically grabbing it. Uh, I can also double click to finish a selection. Oh, not sure why this is coming up. Ah, go back. There we go. You can always just hit delete, right? And it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do that? Absolutely. It has to be editable first. So sometimes the images that we get from the internet need to be converted. So I'm going to uh, right click on my layer and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. Now what that does is literally visually nothing, but it basically changed the coding of that image from a vector to a rastered image, right? If that still doesn't work, you can also raster the image, which is kind of a fail safe way, uh, obviously. Um, so now hit delete on that and it goes away immediately, right? Maybe I want to get rid of the rest but maybe I want to keep actually the structure of you know some of those elements so there's definitely other ways of selecting especially if I know it's already rectangular I can just choose a rectangle I can hold shift and add to my selection that way I don't have to do this like over and over and over 
but obviously I want the ability to manipulate these images a little bit, right? To again expand on their ideas. I'm gonna hit delete. Sweet. Let's do that over here. Obviously it looks like a rectangle, but it's not actually a rectangle. So we'll use our polygonal lasso tool. I can also hold shift to if I need a straight line. It'll of course keep it straight. I can hold shift again to add to my selection. In the video too, it'll also show when I'm clicking versus not clicking. However, I know in the preview, uh, it doesn't, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and delete those. But already right there, you see that we've manipulated this right a little bit. Like maybe I want to show kind of a different background or expand on a different idea. Um, I can click on this layer. I can hit Command T for transform. And I can manipulate what I've selected even. However, if I need to deselect that, obviously I want to I want to do the whole image. So I'll do Command D as in dog or delta. And deselect what I selected. Now, again, sorry if this is absolutely kind of the foundation. You've already know some of these things in, in Photoshop, so of course, maybe please be patient. Another aspect that we can do um, to this is, of course, transform the whole image. So, Command T, and we can, of course, make it bigger or smaller. If I don't hold Shift, though, it will become unproportional, so, so do be careful. But we'll start off with that for now. That I don't know, that's looking pretty cool. Maybe I don't need the actually the whole image. Maybe it's something like that. Kind of like this weird force perspective thing going on. That seems pretty cool. Let's try the next layer. Yeah, I gotta use that and it's so iconic. So maybe there's another way to remove uh, some of this information, right? So let's take it. Let's go ahead and right click on the layer itself and hit blending options instead. Let's test some things, right? A really good way to remove white from a drawing is actually to go to multiply and remove the white. Oh, it's kind of interesting. I kind of like this aspect. I don't know, let's work with it. I really just wanted to remove the sky but that might be close enough. So all I have to do is hit eraser and maybe get rid of the rest. Now obviously it's saying, hey, you have, um, it needs to be converted again. So in my case, I'll just rasterize the object and go ahead and erase what I don't need. So yeah, maybe the image isn't even complete. Maybe it just has some of the aspects that I want to show, such as the greenery and expanding on that it's a machine in the garden. So I'll take that again, Command T. I don't know. Kind of blend those together, why not? I don't know, maybe it's really long, kind of expands on that, that relationship. But well, hopefully you can see that it's even in the background information there. And I don't know, that's kind of artistic, kind of lines up with the windows itself. You guys see what I'm doing there? Basically lining this window with that window. Now again, obviously I should come up with a good argument as to why I did that, but I don't know, I'm just, I'm having fun for this tutorial. That's looking good so far. Maybe I get a picture of Le Corbusier, I didn't get that one. But let's go ahead and check, maybe there's some stuff I could use. Um, another thing you'll notice is, wow, you know, I turned on this layer, but I can't see anything. Well, this also works the same way as if something was on top versus on bottom. So let me show this on the projector a little bit better. Obviously, if this layer is on the top, it will actually be on the top, right? So if I move those layers, right, and say, just drag it down, you can see that, well, now this one's on top and vice versa. So in order to see some things, I might actually have to put those layers on top. This is actually a really key component of the drawing. Um, I don't know, I have this circular element. Maybe I, I kind of tie those together and kind of make something new out of this. I don't know, let's try it. There is a lot of white in this drawing. 
Um, I could change the settings to it. So let's say the levels. So control L. Maybe try some things. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Could definitely remove that. Let's try maybe some blending options. Hmm. Kind of an interesting component. But kind of hard to see too. So maybe blending isn't the best way to go. So in my case, I'll lasso tool it out. Because after all, I just need this piece. And maybe I actually remove some of that background too. Trace it right out of existence. Now obviously you'd want to zoom in, spend some time. If you need to zoom in, it's control plus sign. And we can get literally down to the pixel. However, um, as you guys know, don't waste too much time doing things that aren't too important. However, I guess I could argue it is important for craft. So it should be crafted well. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'll do it really quick. Double click to close. Now what's interesting is, well, I had that highlighted. So if I hit erase, oh, I got to convert it to a smart object first. Unfortunately, you know, this is um, it's just something that happens when you take images from the internet. They're not in any way ready to be manipulated by Photoshop. So we'll convert it to a smart object. Or like you saw before, rasterize a layer. Of course, works every time too. But you'll notice, oh no, I'm erasing the part that I actually wanted. So I'll do Command Z, another great tool. And I'll actually right click first on my selection and select the inverse of that selection. So it'll select the opposite of you know what I actually want or need. So in my case, now when I hit the eraser, now it gets rid of the portion that I, w I actually wanted to get rid of. But as you can see, this is very um, similar to as if all honestly we just had some scissors and we were cutting these out ourselves. Now keep in mind, um, this is really just a tool to get used to. I will say, at least for this assignment, you're more than welcome to print all of these out and cut them out by hand and put them together, right? All I'm saying is that this might be a little easier because you have more control over the size and the shape and the color um, and the ability to, to actually try it five different ways very quickly, right? So we'll talk about that, that too. But let's keep going. I do kind of want to finish this up. And I still have another part to talk about. Let's get rid of some of that other stuff. So I'm going to deselect first. Click on my polygonal tool again. Get rid of some of that background stuff. I'm going to hold shift and get rid of some of that stuff as well. I don't know. I kind of like the light in there coming down. But I kind of want to put my stuff in there. So I don't know. Maybe there's an opening here. Get fancy with the spices. Okay, why not? Hold shift again. I like these black bars in there as well. Another tool in order to get some of these uh, fickle spots is also the magic wand tool. However, it's not always magical, so you can't always count on it. But actually, if you hit W, you can sometimes... Uh, magic tool it but yeah it doesn't always work but let's go ahead and erase what I don't need of that sweep deselect and command T interesting so I don't know like I said I, I thought I was gonna maybe put it with this I don't know maybe I just flip it upside down why not I, I know right you can't even tell but what if instead I, I sort of replace some of the objects you guys see that Oh, weird. It sort of kind of works. Maybe it needs to be in that building, though. I don't know. Interesting. That looks kind of funny, though, so maybe I need to erase some parts of it. I don't know. I kind of like those lines in there. Obviously, for the sake of tutorial. 
don't know, maybe I fuzz it a little bit. Maybe it's about a bigger idea about this project. Like I said, not everything that I'm doing is just absolutely like, oh yeah, I should do that. Right? Obviously just trying to show how we can use um, the program. Sorry. But yeah, you'll see that actually if I right click on any of my tools, specifically right now I'm just in the eraser tool. So if I change the hardness, it, it gives it a softer fuzzy look right, to that cut. Welcome to try it, see what it does. I'm not a huge fan of it because I think it just kind of makes everything look digital. I don't know, it speaks to a bigger idea. And last but not least, let's get a small description uh, about Le Corbusier. Maybe a nice shot of him. Iconic. Look at that guy. Uh, that one looks pretty good. Screenshot it. Actually, I think you can just drag these in. Sweet. So let's put that on the top layer because, you know, I want it to be at the top. Maybe a, a little bigger. I don't know, maybe this time I remove the black. So I'm going to go to blending options, right? However, I don't have any blending options. So, oh, there it is. However, it should be at the top, which tells me this needs to be converted probably to a smart layer. So we'll right click, convert to smart object, rasterize it, and blend it. So I'll go to multiply again, and instead I'll take the black out. Well, that's actually kind of cool too. Interesting. I don't like that. Happy accident. I don't know. Kind of interesting. Got rid of a lot of what I'm doing, but kind of interesting in itself. Uh, let's erase some of that though. At least change up its maybe maybe it's the transparency thing. Let me just change it, or maybe it's the way that it's being layered. Ah, okay, that's starting to work. All right, it starts to get somewhere. Anyway, hopefully enough to look at and plenty of tools to play with. You know, I'm trying to think of some other ones that are somewhat useful for this process. But really, I don't want to throw too much at you, right? Um, a lot of this takes some practice. Um, I do go pretty quick, so again, the reason why I'm recording it. Um, but yeah, this starts to speak to a bigger idea, does it not? It's no longer just a picture of Villa Savoie, but maybe it's quite literally the thoughts, if you will, of Le Corbusier, right? Maybe it's his vision, right? Because the person in the photo montage is looking at something quite specific, right? Um, but again, obviously just really a simple tutorial to, to show these things. I'm not looking for anything really this weird, right? Obviously I haven't really made or formed an argument for this too strongly, uh, besides maybe the machine in the garden and of course Le Corbusier. But any questions um, about Photoshop so far? Fair enough. However, if something comes up to mind, guys, now is the time to ask, right? Seriously, you're going to sit here this week and you're going to be like, I should have asked that question, right? And somebody else might have the exact same question, so you're really helping the studio out. Anyway, let's talk about, talk about the next part. So this is just the photo montage part. The next part is, of course, uh, finding the site plan and scaling it to an 11 by 17. So, well, the first thing we can do is get that 11 by 17. So I'm gonna do File New and make an exact 11 by 17. So in my case, 17 by 11. And again, we can keep it at 300 uh, resolution. Sweet, looking good. At least I know the size. Um, I have my ruler up, and you can also right click on this ruler, especially in the corner, and switch it to inches, right? If you're not too familiar with 
pixel calculations. I guess you could be doing the math 300 every inch. Anyway, but uh, if you don't want to do all that math, uh, of course the inches are at the top and definitely helpful, right? Now, what's important about this is, well, it needs to be to a scale. Now, I understand that everybody's project is different, right? So your project may be very big, so you have to choose uh, maybe one inch equals 100 feet or one inch equals 50 feet or one inch equals 20 feet, so on and so forth. Now, what's important for this part, guys, is that you are accurate, right? And show enough of the context so that we can get a gist of what's going on in the project. So what do I mean by that? Let's go over to Google Earth Pro and actually go to the Villa Savoie since it's my precedent for today. Definitely worth going to, by the way. If you're ever in Paris, it's like an hour trip away. Totally worth it. But as you can see, our project, um, dang, it's got a lot of real estate to itself, uh, especially for one house. But um, there's a lot there. In fact, it's two aerial photos. You can notice that this photo is a lot different than that photo. What's interesting about Google Earth Pro, though, is um, not only can we take some really accurate measurements that I'll also show uh, in just regular Google Earth, but we can go back in time which can sometimes be really interesting. Some of you guys might be able to actually see what your site looked like before it even had a project on it. In our case, this was built in 1928, so even if we go as far back as 1985, um, yeah, obviously, it's gonna be a pretty grainy image. Um, but interesting enough, we need a site plan, um, but we don't need everything in the world, no pun intended. Um, obviously this wouldn't be a good image to take because, well, I can hardly even see the project. Now, well, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. This might not be the greatest image to take either because, well, it doesn't even show the road or, you know, how I get to it. So finding somewhere in between, you know, where it's just right, you know, the project's not too big, it's not too small, it's enough to relate to right maybe I'll line up my north arrow to the top of the page that would be good too and of course center it to something right uh, last but not least what I need is a measurement right so actually I'm not a huge fan of this colored shot but it's okay let's get it as big as possible that way I can have the most uh, pixel density also be aware that you don't have a a particular angle of yours. Make sure that it is a, you know, sort of a floor plan perspective or a overhead perspective. Right, bird's eye view at a 90 degree angle. But uh, last but not least, we just need a measurement. So let's go ahead and make sure that's in feet. I think by default it is in meters, so do be careful. And we don't necessarily like need this on the project. I guess we could also remove it in Photoshop. So yeah, I guess I'll do it in the middle of the project to show you how to remove it. Uh, but let's say that was my site plan. Yeah, it's starting to show some buildings over here, some parking lots, a building over there. We definitely got some circulation of the roads. We got the tree foliage. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to look at, right? Definitely a healthy amount. So I'm just gonna guess, right? I'm gonna treat this, maybe this is my 11 by 17. And I'm just gonna guess what an inch looks like. Uh, so, I don't know. Let's see, one to 20 feet. And we're gonna get as close as possible. We're gonna fake it till we make it. So, 20.21 is pretty close to 20 feet. Let's see if we can get even closer. Yeah, it looks like 20 feet, 0.17 is about as close as we can get to 20 feet. I don't know about you, do you guys even see that little yellow line there? Probably not, right? So, I don't know, 20 feet per inch is probably not the way to go. So, let's try 30 feet. And we're there. 29 points. That's a hard one to get. 30.19. I always say go a little bit above more than below. but. Uh, because then you accidentally give yourself some more space sometimes. Anyway, kind of a, a neat little trick that I always use. Um, not in the real world though, you gotta use the exact space. Um, 
30 feet. Can you guys see that yellow line? Probably not. Could be the projector at this point. Let's try 50 feet. Maybe that's going to be a good inch for us. Or 1 to 40 even. Looks like 50 is going to do it for us. So 49 or 50.29. That's a little bit over. I'm going to go ahead and click and save. Now I do want to show you how to do that in uh, the browser as well. For some of us who maybe don't have uh, Google Earth Pro, it is free too. You can get a, like a 30 day trial. Um, much easier to install on Windows. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like also on Google Earth and how we measure something specifically on Google Earth. Now, um, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 2019. But now Google Earth is different than Google Maps. It used to be all one sort of conglomerate program, but it is uh, separated now. And let's face it, it does have some different graphics um, than Google Earth Pro. So I do want to show how we get that. But as this is loading, I'll go ahead and get my screenshot. So Villa, Savoy. We'll go fly over there. And like I said, we just really need that screenshot image so that we can start to scale this. So we have a 1 to 50, right? Or at least that red line equals 50 feet. So that's nice. I can still zoom in and zoom out. It'll make that red line smaller or bigger. So, okay, I've established what I want to use. I'm going to do a screenshot. So on the Mac, that's control shift number 4. And you know, it might not even be a bad idea to get the graphic scale in there. Sometimes there's even a graphic scale on here. But uh, that's looking pretty good. Get that. And of course, file, place, embedded. Oh, excellent hit linked. Embed. There we go. We'll get that screenshot that we just took. Voila. Now we're almost done. Right? If we hit enter, it's of course going to look a lot more crisp. In this ruler bar, if you click inside of it and drag out, it makes a little guideline or a, a guideline bar. And it even has a little number next to it indicating um, the measurement of the, the ruler, if that makes sense. Right? It's almost like a parallel bar. Um, now what's nice is, you know, I can even use them horizontally as well. Uh, you can delete these and they don't print. Right? So they they really are just guideline tools. But you may have guessed it, we need to know what an inch is on the page and we need to align it to that red marker of 50 feet. That way this image becomes 1 to 50. So I'm going to hold shift because I, I like perfect measurements. So that one's 9.5 inches. And so my second one, I need 10.5 inches. Man, I almost nailed it. So 10.5. And as you can see, if we zoom in, I need to make this red line as long as that line because, well, this line represents 50 feet. And I'm making it 1 inch equals 50 feet. So, I mean, I can get really, really accurate. Right, we can get it down to the, the pixel. Oh my god, there's a lot of pixels in that red line. There we go. And literally line it up to that. And you may have guessed it as well. Command T to transform. And we just need to keep it proportional. Right? Until it is actually 1 to 50. Might have to zoom in back and forth. Right? Before it actually gets there. And my gosh, we nailed it the first try. So you can't see it too much on the projector, but you'll see a cyan line and a cyan line. Of course, you'll see it much better on the screen recording. I'll hit enter, and by golly, this 11 by 17 is now a 1 to 50 scale of my product. Right? I have now have a site plan that is to scale. And now you have a video that you can refer to every time you need to have a scale drawing. Right? This is kind of just my method. I find it to be the easiest method. Honestly, there's about 15 other methods. So you don't have to use this one. However, um, I really wish somebody would have gave me a method. I was really more just handed a, a piece of paper that said, here, make me a photo montage. And I just 
kind of search for YouTube until I realized how to work Photoshop. So again, I'm trying to mend some bridges here between our generations where, you know, a lot is expected from older generations sometimes they're just like figure it out. Whereas in they don't realize how much information is out there now. Figuring it out is a little bit different than going to the library and looking through cards now, right? I now have 16.7 million search results in about 0.2 seconds. So as you can see, we have a different generational problem. Anyway, this sets out to really mend that. And hopefully you now know there's a way to scale any drawing, right? Obviously we can use this method when we need to scale a graphics project or just about anything. So it works universally as well, is another reason I like this method. Anyway, last but not least, we need a graphic scale. I know, graphic scales, we're, we're terrified of them. But what's nice is, well, we can quite literally draw them out of uh, grid lines. So I'm gonna say, I just wanna show, usually my graphic scales are about three inches. And I'm gonna put it down um, in the corner. I usually put mine in the left-hand corner, so I'm gonna cover up kind of this little piece right here. And I'm going to do something kind of neat. I accidentally moved my image, so I'm going to lock it. I can also just right click or choose this little lock symbol. And of course, that way you don't accidentally mess up your scale, right? I mean, you just locked it in at 1 to 50. You don't want to accidentally, oh, mess it up while you were drawing your graphic scale. So I'm just going to go and fake it till I make it, right? At least for the sake of speed and the tutorial. Obviously, if I had a graphic scale, I want to get the midpoint and the midpoint of that midpoint and the midpoint of that midpoint and so on and so forth. But what's kind of neat is, well, you can use your selection tool and it'll quite literally lock on to your drawing. Right? So that is kind of nice. I can unlock and I can actually erase from that piece. So, sorry, I gotta convert to smart object. Still raster it. All right, now I got a graphic scale going and it's actually part of my image. Last but not least, some of those need to be black and white, right? What's nice is again, I can just go to my grid lines. I can use a brush tool, so the letter B is in boy and brush it in kind of want a nice blur to it. You know, I don't like things too perfect. Uh, I'm more of a Toy Story 4 kind of guy. But it looks like I'm getting actually quite a bit of the image, right? Or at least more than I bargained for. So, looks like we need a different selection. That's okay. Let's get that piece as well. Hold Shift, and I can do this really all at the same time can even do edit undo in these which is kind of a new feature for, for Photoshop to say the least but yeah those guidelines super helpful in terms of uh, being accurate that way I could just do that got a nice little graphic scale going and if those lines start getting in the way you can of course use your select tool and delete them especially after you've already got them Last but not least, you really shouldn't do text in Photoshop, but I, I will allow it for uh, for this project. We just need some numbers. And what is one inch equal in my case? Anybody paying attention? 50, thank you. So in my case, I'll hold Option and Shift because I can immediately just make a copy. I can do that actually over and over again. Well, let me do it once. Yeah, but not everything always works all the time. Oh, I'm excellently selecting the wrong leg. There you go. But yeah, just a few. Even one, uh, the middle, and of course, the last one. Damn it. There we go those in the right spot. Obviously I just need to change that to 50. Or wait, one and a half inches would be... 
kind of a weird number. Let's just put it in the right spot. One inch. Actually, let's double check. I didn't do that right. Another reason to do grids. They line right back up to your grid. Um, okay, so one inch is right there. Eh, it's alright. Really, this is just so that we can know the scale. Oh, already got one. So three inches would be 150 feet. And of course, at this point it would be zero. However, these are kind of hard to see. I don't know, I might need to get fancy with the spices a little bit. Kind of highlight around this. And maybe lighten up the background of it. Uh, let's go with levels. So what's nice is, even through your selection, if you hit a command, oh, can't be locked, if you hit a command, of course you can still change stuff. Yeah, if stuff's not working out for you, can't see it too well, you can always brighten it up. But yeah. And then, of course, once I'm signed into Miro, right, I can actually, well, this is my computer graphics board, but you'll see something like this. Um, unfortunately, it says Design 1 on it. Let me change it real quick. This is our Design 2. But it's a previously used board. Fall 2023. Mm. There we go. And it looks like even one of us already made it. Sweet. So yeah, let's say I was done with that. I can go ahead and file save it. Save as. In my case, uh, test site plan. Villa Savoy. Spelled that wrong, but oh well. Probably shouldn't save it as a Photoshop file. Can't put a Photoshop file on Miro. However, it's good just in case, you know, um, good thing to note is that you need to save your Photoshop file if you want to be able to edit your layers, right? Some of us may have not known that. I sort of forgot this might be the beginning for some of us still. Um, however, I'm happy to recommend some Photoshop tutorials as well. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and save that as a PDF or just a JPEG. So we can save as, or we can export. I'm going to go ahead and export as, and I'm going to go with a JPEG. Computer always goes a little bit slower on the screen recordings, but there we go. JPEG, export, looking good, Get on the desktop so I can find it, minimize. Great, looks like some of us found the mirror board. Fantastic, I like it because it's like an Xbox Live kind of thing going on, you know? Don't move me around, All right? Don't move my stuff. In fact, I'll lock it so you can't move it. But yeah, obviously you just need to put your name and post your stuff. So in my case, Professor Verrett. See what I got. Images. and drag and drop. Obviously there's no real scale in Miro, so kind of just go the best of your ability. That's about 11 by 17 compared to this man, so that's good. And you can scoot, scoot, scoot each other across. But this is actually our pen up for Monday. All right, so that would be my site plan, got a graphic scale, and of course I'd save my Le Corbusier Photo montage, that's looking actually pretty sweet. I'm not gonna lie, it's growing on me. I'd probably have to post rationalize, but but looking pretty good. And keep in mind, it's for preliminary, right? Um, just wanna see what you got on Monday. It doesn't necessarily have to be finished. Maybe there's still some thoughts. Maybe you, you just want kind of some feedback. Maybe you came up with three different ones, by all means. That was the last ex aspect I wanted to show you is that, well, you could save this, right? You can move stuff around and try something else. You can save it again. There's 
iteration number two. Um, you know, I could try it with these ones, right? That's iteration number three, so on and so forth. Does that make sense, guys? Hopefully, this is a really powerful tool, um, which gives you the ability to not spend literally 48 hours making a and cutting and exactoing an idea out, right? Because that can take a really long time uh, compared to this, where a lot of that has sort of been digitalized. So, so, anyway, I'll leave it entirely up to you. You're more than, again, welcome to find magazines or print out these images and, and cut them up nicely. Um, so, there is that option as well. Anyway. Any questions, guys, about the site plan or photo montage? All right, I'll leave it at that, guys. And I'll upload it uh, as soon as I get home. Mm -hmm.